Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I wanted to make a video to both say Happy New Year and to kind of go over the year in general as far as jailbreaks are concerned. But like I said, first Happy New Year, Happy 2013 guys. 2012 has been great, and I'd really like to thank all of you for your continued support and making all of the giveaways that I do possible. But back to my main point, 2012 has been great and 2013 will be even better. I have a lot of things planned for both my YouTube channel as well as my website. So now without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into jailbreaking. Now my past few videos I have answered a lot of questions related to jailbreaking and I've also gone into depth on the current jailbreak status and kind of explained things. Well now I'm going to go even further into depth and answer more of your questions. So right here I have just a very basic chart I created in Photoshop and I've kind of just broken it down for you guys. So let me zoom in here. I have it separated into two different categories, jailbreakable and non-jailbreakable. That's currently right now. There have been jailbreaks for some of these devices in the past, but there isn't currently a jailbreak available for those devices on that side of the chart. So now what I'm going to do is explain it to you guys. So for jailbreakable here, we have the current tethered jailbreak, which supports iOS 6 as well as 6.0.1, which is the latest firmware for all devices that aren't either the iPad mini or the iPhone 5, which were the only two devices that Apple released iOS 6.0.2 for. So I'm going to go more into depth in a second, but but like I was saying, the current jailbreak functions on these devices that I have listed over here. And that's because it's a boot ROM based jailbreak, meaning it takes advantage of a hardware based exploit and it's impossible for Apple to patch it for the devices that it supports. In order to do that, they'd have to release new devices, which obviously they've done since the jailbreak. And they have also phased out older devices as well by not supporting them in iOS 6, which is why there are only a limited number of devices that are supported by the current jailbreak, which utilizes G Hot's Lime Rain exploit from 2010. So as far as the devices that can currently be jailbroken, they're the A4 based devices, which include the iPhone 4, as well as the fourth generation iPod Touch. Now, like I said, there are more, but Apple stopped supporting them in iOS 6. And there's also the iPhone 3GS, which is powered by a 600 megahertz ARM Cortex A8 processor. Now moving over to the non-jailbreakable side, we have the A5 based devices, which include the iPhone 4S, the iPad 2, the iPod Touch 5th generation, as well as the iPad mini. We have the A5X, which includes the third generation iPad. We have the A6, which includes the iPhone 5, and the one A6X based device, the fourth generation iPad. Now, some of these devices have already been jailbroken by members of the iPhone dev team, as well as just other hackers who have been instrumental in the past in the development of different jailbreak utilities. So I'll get into all of that more in a second, but let's go over some of the firmwares from 2012, as well as some of the jailbreaks. And in order to do that, we're going to have to start off in 2011. 11 a little bit with the release of iOS 5. So of course, like I said, iOS 5 was released in 2011. And then past iOS 5, we have 5.0.1, which was the first untethered jailbreak for iOS 5. And it was released in two separate forms. It had a red snow version, as well as an absinthe version that was specifically for the iPhone 4S as well as the iPad 2. Now Red Snow did take care of all of the other devices for 5.0.1. And then moving on, we have iOS 5.1 which this is when 2012 started to kick in. And we have the tethered jailbreak with red snow again for the A4 based devices. And then past that we have 5.1.1, which is another untethered jailbreak for iOS 5. And this was the last jailbreak for iOS 5 because it was the last firmware. Now this was released in two separate forms as well, Absinthe and Red Snow. Both of them were able to jailbreak all current iOS devices at the time. Now past that we have iOS 6, and this is where things start to get a little unfortunate because we don't have an untethered jailbreak for iOS 6 yet. However, we're just barely into the releases for iOS 6 and we have a long time to go before iOS 7 is released. So past iOS 6, we have 6.0.1, which like I was saying, is the current firmware for all devices that aren't either the iPhone 5 or the iPad mini because Apple did release 6.0.2 to address an unnamed Wi-Fi bug. And that's most likely to prepare them for iOS 
one so that all devices will be able to successfully use Apple's over the air update feature when they're connected to Wi Fi. And obviously, a Wi Fi bug could affect the ability to upgrade for a lot of users. Now, let's go ahead and go over some key points in the jailbreak status for iOS 6. Let's bring up Safari here and Best Tech Info. And speaking of Best Tech Info, I did just recently push out a new design for my site. So just be sure to check it out again. I am currently working on it. It looks much better on the desktop version than on either the iPad or the mobile iPhone version. Now, starting out back in June, this was before iOS 6 was officially released, apparently Apple patched a bug that developers were using to actually jailbreak the devices on iOS 6. However, that didn't really matter because as stated by Muscle Nerd, it was specifically for developers because it relied on a developer account. So this is what's referred to as a fail break, which essentially is just a jailbreak that relies on a developer account that cannot be released to the public because not everybody has access to a developer account and it could also cause legal issues. So that's essentially what a fail break is, a jailbreak that's not intended for public release. All right, and then we have the iPhone 5. It was successfully jailbroken just hours after it was released, and a couple screenshots were posted of it with Cydia. As you can see, we have Cydia right here. This is just a screenshot that Chapone tweeted out, and I just added the iPhone 5 graphic around it to give you again the complete sense that this is Cydia on the iPhone 5. But this jailbreak was through a fail break method, and basically the theory behind this is that if they can jailbreak it using a fail break method, then hopefully they'll be able to jailbreak it and release it to the public. All right, and then after that, we have Pod2G discussing iOS 6 and the iPhone 5 untethered jailbreak at WWDC. I'm not really going to go too into depth on this. Same thing with a lot of the articles I'm covering. I'll just link you guys to the most important ones down below in the more info. All right, and then following Pod2G's talk, we actually have Planet Being with great news related to the iPhone 5 jailbreak. Now, he tweeted out that he's upgraded the fail break with the kernel exploit so that tweaks actually work on the iPhone 5 and that he's achieved almost a full tethered jailbreak through a developer account. So more progress was made to the development of the iPhone 5 jailbreak in October. So, of course, this is absolutely great news. And on the heels of that, it was announced that the iPad mini was successfully jailbroken just one one day after it was released in November, Muscle Nerd, the leader and public face of the iPhone dev team, sent out a tweet to his followers, which does prove that the iPad mini has been jailbroken. And then of course, after that, we have the new full-sized fourth generation iPad successfully jailbroken on iOS 6. Now, all of these jailbreaks were through means of a fail break. And like I said, again, the theory behind this is that if they can jailbreak it on a fail break, then hopefully they'll be able to get it ready for a public release. Now, this is probably the best news of all. Now, we have POSIX Ninja, the former leader of the Chronic dev team, who announced a solo effort to try and complete a boot ROM jailbreak for the A5, A5X, A6, and A6X based devices. So this would include all of the devices that are currently not able to be jailbroken right now. And again, this would be through a boot ROM jailbreak or a tethered jailbreak. And like I said, with the current boot ROM jailbreak, which utilizes the LimeRain exploit, it's actually a hardware vulnerability. So they will be able to be jailbroken as long as Apple can continues to update them and continues to release new firmwares for those devices. So this is obviously great news and this will definitely ensure that jailbreaking has a future. This, in my opinion, is by far better than an untethered jailbreak because it ensures that with every single release, you'll be able to jailbreak your device almost instantly. And for those of you who still don't know the difference between an untethered and a tethered jailbreak, let me explain really quick. So a tethered jailbreak means you have to plug your device into your computer and rerun a certain part of the jailbreak utility every time you need to reboot it if you want to boot it back up into its fully functional jailbroken state. Whereas an untethered jailbreak, you can simply reboot it without having to worry about plugging it back into a computer and again rerunning a part of the utility. So this is the latest news as far as a jailbreak is concerned. Now, of course, in the first half of December, we have Dream JB. Now, Dream JB is the handle that a fake developer went by. He claimed that he was going to release a full untethered jailbreak for all devices on December 22nd, which obviously he didn't do. He announced that it was all just a social experiment. He was trying to see how quickly his Twitter account could gain followers and how many hits his site could get. So that just goes to show you that really the only jailbreaks will come from a trusted source being members of the iPhone or chronic dev teams. All right, and finally, while this isn't actually related to jailbreaking itself, it definitely served as a major part of jailbreaking for a lot of users. Now, Hackulose has officially been shut down and the install as piracy source has been removed from Cydia. So no more cracked or pirated apps, from install this. Now, personally, I'm against piracy, and I think this is absolutely great news. However, as pointed out in the Hackulous resignation message, it's quite possible that the void left by the closure of Hackulous 
other more established communities will swiftly rise to prominence. But if you guys are interested in a completely legal way to obtain free paid iOS applications from Apple's App Store, just be sure to check down below. I have a couple of videos which go into depth and they explain, again, how you can earn paid iOS apps from Apple's App Store. So I hope you guys liked this video and I hope you guys have a great new year. Again, 2013 is going to be great. I have a lot of awesome things in store for this year. And don't forget, if you guys like this video, just be sure to rate it up and leave your comments down below in the comments section to enter to win a brand new fourth generation iPad. Now to be updated more often, don't forget to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.